Glory Divine World Ministries is a place to call home. Come and allow God to unleash your potential, purpose, and destiny. The way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through Him and through the blood of Jesus. Because of His unconditional love, hallelujah, He sent His only begotten Son, and that is Jesus Christ, to die so He can reconcile Himself to you. to come and be a part of our glory divine family you never choose jesus he chose you welcome to glory divine network tv with your host apostle ryan suknanan let's get ready to listen to the divinely inspired word of god your word of god and we thank you father god for your son we believe he's anointed your word is anointed Heavenly Father, we pray that your word touch us, let your word address each and every one of us. We pray in the name of Jesus that you have your way and take control of God. We come against everything that is not of thine, Lord, that might try to distract the service. We pray in the name of Jesus, we plead your blood upon this place, O God. We believe in the name of Jesus that, Lord, whatever your will, Father God, it will be done in this place this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Church, I greet you all in the awesome, the powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of our spiritual parents, Apostle Ryan and First Lady Nisha, we'd love to welcome each and every one of you to Glory Divine World Ministries, a place to call home. Amen. Our welcome is also extended to those of you that are watching online. It's so good to see so many of you in the house of God. Give yourself a round of applause. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice in the presence of the Lord. Are you ready, church? Amen. Let's go.
we are victorious we are victorious through, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior nothing can stand in our way if we are victorious in Christ the Bible teaches us that greater is he that is inside of you than the one that is in the world so whatever you're going through whatever your situation may be don't let that your situation overpower you because I want to remind you of one thing the devil knows what he sees he doesn't know what is inside of you so let your let your joy let your peace let your love overflow in Jesus name come on somebody rejoice with me this morning amen hallelujah praise the Lord yeah. hallelujah yeah.
לחלק, תהיה רטין, בית מהר, אין מי סר, ולב, תהיה רטין, בית מהר, אין מי סר, ולב, תהיה רטין, בית מהר, אין מי סר, ולב, somebody to help me I don't know is it because of the cold weather or maybe you know the voices are not so <clears throat> you know because of flu or something because I, I remember hearing a uh, brother lucky asking you guys one small little thing It simply says this will like again yes I want to hear this side This will echo by a liquor If you believe you say This will echo This will echo This will echo take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Come on, give yourself a round of applause. It's so wonderful to hear you guys singing so beautiful. Amen. Allow me to please invite our brother Torino. He's going to be doing the tithe and the offering. Can we please welcome him in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Praise God.
Good morning to the online viewers and my brothers and sisters in Christ. Firstly, I would like to thank my dad, Bishop Brian, and mom, First Lady Nisha, for this opportunity to encourage you on giving. I entitled my short message, Tithing is the Protection of Your Current Finances. In James chapter 2, verse 17, in this, it says, In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. I'm going to repeat. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, it is dead. The Bible says the purpose of tithing is to teach us to always put God first in our lives. Tithing is an action. It is putting an action to your faith. So this proves that you are not sowing in vain. The Bible says that the word of God will not return void, but it will accomplish what it is set out to do. We as humans become complacent with little and think we have a whole lot. Yet we serve a big God that wants to bless us beyond measure, more than we can even contain. The Bible says you must live by faith and not by sight in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Tithing is just a reminder that, to tell you that God is the supplier of everything we have. It enables you to prove that your faith in God as being your source. It enables you to prove that God is in your finances. Tithing is a personal invitation to God to bless your finances. We always sowing seeds for God to enlarge our territory. I have done it, you have done it. Why are we not sowing seeds for the protection of finances that we already have? Tithing is that protection to protect your current finances. Children of God, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8, be alert and of sober mind, your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to devour. The easiest way the enemy can get to an individual is in his finances. He can cripple a man by attacking his finances. I'm not trying to scare any one of you, but your finances, your current finances, needs protection. How many people out there sold their souls to the enemy just to get wealthy? How many did wrong and committed sin just to have a little extra? Many homes and families were broken because of finances. Many marriages ended in divorce because one of the partners lost everything. But I want to tell you something. There is a God and his name is Jesus. He will protect your family and your finances. He will build a wall of fire around your family and everything you own your home, your vehicles, and your wealth. So in closing, church, if you have not been protecting your current finances, start doing so. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Let's be wise in our faith and put an action to it and see what the Lord can do for you. Amen. Can we all rise? Can we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for us and shedding your blood for us. My God, every individual here is standing with a seed for your protection, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you will bless them beyond measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, I pray if they do not have, they stand as an offering before you, my God. I pray, Lord Jesus, bless them, bless the furtherance of this meeting in Jesus' mighty name. For the online viewers, the banking details will appear on the board. Thank you. Oh
Church, you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Church, do we have any new people in the house of God this morning? If you are new in the house, can you please stand? We'd love to welcome you on behalf of Apostle Ryan. Can we welcome our sister over here? Hallelujah. Can you please remain standing if you are near, new? We want to share some information with regards to the church. Hallelujah. And those of you that are watching online, welcome to Glory Divine World Ministries, a place to call home. Amen. Isn't it good once again to be found in the house of the Lord? Amen. Who is ready for a good message? Hallelujah. Come and look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Good message on its way. Get ready. Other neighbor. Say neighbor. Good message on the way. Can somebody praise Jesus? Hallelujah. Church, I would like to ask you to please turn your attention to the monitor. We want to share for you some information with regard to the church. Amen. Are you still blessed? Amen. Greetings family, welcome to Glory Divine World Ministries, your place to call home. A Rainbow Nation Church for the whole family. So what's happening in Glory Divine? Before I tell you the exciting announcement, let's go through some house rules to make sure you have a blessed spiritual experience. Firstly, we kindly request that you occupy the seats at the front of the auditorium. This will help ensure an uninterrupted worship experience for both you and the other members who may arrive late. So that way you won't miss a single moment of the action. And speaking of not missing out, if you have little ones who might become noisy or disruptive, don't worry, we've got you covered. Kindly make use of our cozy mother's room complete with live video and audio feed of the service. Also note that there is no eating or drinking allowed in the auditorium. Now we want to make sure there's enough space for everyone, right? So please respect and adhere to our parking attendants when directed. We know accidents can happen. So we want to remind you that our management and staff will do everything possible to ensure your safety. However, we indemnify ourselves against any injury or theft that may occur outside of our control. Now let's talk about the bathroom situation. Parents, kindly accompany your kiddies to the bathroom to ensure that they don't waste any of the provided hygiene products. And if your kids aren't attending Sunday school, make sure that they are accompanied by a parent or an adult when using the bathroom. Speaking of Sunday school, it is important to note that it is the responsibility of parents to hand over their kids to the Sunday school department and pick them up after the service. Ladies' bathrooms are located towards the office block first door on the left, and the men's room is located outside on your right when exiting from the main entrance. Or kindly ask a steward or an usher and they will gladly assist. We kindly request not to drink any water from the church taps as fresh, clean drinking water is provided at the main entrance of the church. <sighs> Last but not least, if you have an appointment to see the Apostle after the service, please consult a steward or an usher and they will gladly direct you to a waiting room. And now, on to some exciting announcements. Our Sunday services is at 8.30 a.m., so don't be late. On Tuesdays, come and join us for Divine Connection at 7 p.m. And for all you young people out there, don't miss our youth ministry, Getting Over Average Life, at 7 p.m. at Campus 2, which is located at Connemaraya Street and Church Square, Lang Lachter. Baby dedication will be held on the 11th of June. So if you'd like to have your little one dedicated, make sure to speak to a steward or an usher to fill in our online form. Unfortunately, due to poor attendance, impact in men's and women's fellowship will be closed for the duration of winter. Services, however, will resume in September. Last but not least, if you have made Glory Divine World Ministries your home and you would love to serve in any of our departments, please contact one of our leaders and we would love to have you on board. Board. And if it's your first time joining us at Glory Divine World Ministries, kindly stay behind after the service as we would love to officially welcome you to the family. 
For more information, WhatsApp us on 081-304-9579 or visit our website at www.gloriedivine.co.za. Thank you for joining us today and God bless you as you enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Wow. Church, as you know, this is the time that our apostle has given us where we can encourage on the goodness and the beauty of this God that we serve. He is indeed wonderful. He is awesome. He is marvelous. He is the great I am. If we have anyone in the house of God with a glad heart that want to share what the Lord has done, it doesn't matter how small, how big it is, please come forward. We'd love to hear what the Lord has deposited in your spirit. Hallelujah. Can we welcome our sister? Come on, church. Let's welcome our sister. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Good morning, church. Thank you, Apostle and Mamnisha, for this opportunity to testify. I just want to give God glory about this miracle and precious baby that I'm holding. God has blessed me with this baby at the age of 42 years when I, I was starting to entertain the flesh that was giving up. But because of the encouragement and the constant and continuous motivation from our apostle, I kept going and believed that God will one day bless me. At work, I'm a midwife. I work with highly highly specialized obstetricians who were even saying to me, you are stinge, please come, we'll help you. And I was thinking of the 70,000, 80,000 of doing in vitro fertilization, but I, I said, no, my God will give me a baby. If God wants to give me a baby, he will give me a baby. And I just want to give God that today she turned one yesterday. And I thank you, Apostle, for your prayers, for your motivation every time for us. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Can we welcome our sister again? Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a saying that says, What tinta bafazi? Oh, you'll know that. Morning, church. I'm standing here on behalf of my daughter. Um, I have a very grateful heart this morning. And Bishop, thank you for your guidance, for your prayers, for everything that you do for us behind the scenes. Um, she's graduated on Friday with a distinction, and she's the student of the year, and she's a licensed driver all in one weekend, and I can just give God all the glory and all the thanks for all his favor, his grace, his mercy, and his best. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. God is good. Praise the Lord. Shall we all stand in the presence of the Lord? See what the Lord has done. Can you see what the Lord has done? I know you know the song. Again? Come, we're going to try that again. Everybody say, See what the Lord. Can you see what the Lord has done? See what the Lord has done. Has come to pass. Can you see what the Lord has done? Come on, let's do it one more time. One more time. I want to hear everybody in the house of God say, See what the Lord has done. Say, Can you see what the Lord has done? Lucky. Lucky. What we've waited for. Can everybody say? Oh, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Can you see what the Lord has done? Oh, just see what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come. Ah uh -huh. 
somebody praise Jesus this morning? Can somebody just give him glory? Do you believe that we serve an awesome God? Come on, I don't hear you, church. Do you believe that we serve an awesome God? He's awesome and mighty to be praised. His name is above every name. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the soon coming God. He is the Alpha, the Omega. We worship Him and glorify Him. He is Jesus, our Lord. Worship Him, say. Come on, sing. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. He be in the valley. He be in the valley. Hides me from the rain. Hides me from the rain. Come on, one voice. Say, my God is awesome. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Gives me strength when I've been weakened. Forever He will reign. Everybody say, my God is awesome. Can somebody, anybody praise his holy name? With one voice, say, My God is awesome.
He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. Awesome. me from the rain. Do you believe that this morning, my God? Heals me when I'm broken. Gives me strength when I've been weak. Wherever you reign. Everybody say, everybody say this morning, if you believe it, everybody say, my God is, everybody say, everybody say, if you believe it this morning, say, if God has been good to you, won't say, time everybody say awesome say my god my god yes. just raise your hands this morning raise your hands this morning brother lucky you help me Raise your hands this morning. Oh. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you.
seconds and speak to the Holy Spirit remember we need the Holy Spirit daily in our lives it is the Holy Spirit that anoints us and gives us strength empowers us fights for us opens doors for us divinely accelerates the natural and turn it into supernatural the Holy Spirit is a boss stick that sticks families and marriages together. The Holy Spirit sets you free, gives you the strength to, to be victorious over every situation of life. The Holy Spirit removes every traps, every traps, setups that is set by the evil one for your future. The Holy Spirit cancels every plans of the enemy. The Holy Spirit enables you to walk in the will of God. So say, Holy Spirit, I invite you in my life today. Make me and mold me and shape me, renew me. Speak 
to me, direct me, lead me, guide me, teach me, empower me, anoint me. Fight my battles. Open doors that are closed. Divinely accelerate my answers that I'm waiting for. Remove every obstacles and hurdles and stoppages from my life. Cancel delays. Let there be a breakthrough. Let there be an open heaven upon my life. Let the divine take over. Let the supernatural happen. Let miracles take place. Let healing and deliverance come to me. Let me excel. Let me rise up over every situation in life. Let nothing by any chance defeat me. Lord, help me to be a conqueror, an overcomer, not a quitter, to win over the battles of life. Blow your wind upon me, refresh me, and revive me. Renew everything that is being torn apart. Mend everything that is broken. Restore my family, restore my marriage, restore my health. Lord, today is my day of my miracle. Today is my day that I will receive divine, divine help. Nothing is impossible for you, God. Today is a turning point in my life. My story will change. My new season will come. Every oppressor's Every enemy that is trying to destroy me will be removed from my life. My business will prosper. My career will prosper. There will be peace in my home. Every frustration will leave. My prayer will be answered. My children will be restored. Every devil's plan will be cut off from their life. Drugs, addiction, alcoholism will not be in my home. Gangsterism shall not be in my home. A new gene, a new DNA is being transferred into my family. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to be the one that will set an example. I am unstoppable because of your grace, my God. Your mercy is upon me. Your forgiveness is upon me. Your plan is upon me. Your hand is upon me. I will never fail in life. I will succeed in everything that I do. Every door that has been closed shall open up. God's grace and mercy shall accelerate and promote me. I am rising, I'm rising, I'm rising over every situation and hurdles and mountain. I'm not a failure. There's no failure in my system. I'm going to be the one that will change the history of my family. I receive this blessing. I receive this declaration. I receive this decree upon my life. And my life is changing. In Jesus' name. If you agree, say amen. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's give the praise and worship team a hand. The leadership, give yourself a hand. Amen. I can see all of you are coming back to church. So the church is getting full again. So give yourself a hand. Hallelujah. Don't let winter keep you away. We have warm blood in us. The blood of Jesus. I want to I welcome those that are new. Feel at home. Glory divine. A place to call home. And God is good. God is good. I said God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Awesome. Amen. I said when, uh, when you see our sister coming back, she will not be holding their crutches and walking. Amen. Can you stand up, sister? Hallelujah. 
You don't see her catting and touching and walking and all that club foot and everything. Because our God, bless you, sister. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is good. I said, God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to get into the word of God, and I believe God is going to speak to you. So, Lord, speak to me. It's a very, very powerful subject matter that I'm preaching this morning. And I started uh, two weeks ago, the dynamic power of Pentecost, part two. The dynamic power of Pentecost, part two. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me up. When we sing a song, fill me up till I overflow. Don't let it just be a song. Let it be the desire of your heart. A desire that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, church, this life that we are living in, the world that we are living in, we cannot do without the Holy Spirit. We cannot do without the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You will battle in life, you will struggle in life, and you'll be fighting a losing battle. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you open your heart to receive added strength, you know, like a 1.3 Taz or a 1.3 Uno, you're putting in a double table in it. Hallelujah. And you, you know when you have a double turbo, you know what happens? I drive an ML63 by turbo, and I know the power. Sometimes the car want to go before you. You just touch a little bit, it's like want to go before you. V8 by turbo. That is the Holy Spirit when it empowers you. Say, I received the Holy Spirit. I received that by turbo power to empower me. To become victorious over the battles of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's turn to the word of God. I welcome everybody online. I see thousands of people now. The online viewers are increasing. But not glory divine people. Glory divine people must be here. Yeah, I'm talking about all the other, all over the world that the people who watch is fine. We welcome you. We pray for you. May the presence of God be in your home. In the mighty, share this message. When I go home, there must be over 100 shares. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 8. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, New King James Version. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all full, say all full, with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now one of the things that I want to bring to your attention is that the devil never wants you to speak about the Holy Spirit. The Bible in the book of Revelations talks about the dead church. Hallelujah. Jesus says you'd rather be hot than cold. If you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Hallelujah. The day of Pentecost is the day where the church was born. And the church was born with power. Say power. Acts 1 verse 8, the Bible says, When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Churches all over the world is trying their best to keep the Holy Spirit away from the church so the church can be a place of religion. It can be a place of institution. And let me tell you, without the Holy Spirit, the church is just a social gathering. This church is not a social gathering. The day of Pentecost, the Bible say, Jesus said to the men and women, go wait on the upper room in unity. Gather together and wait for the promise where heaven will invade you by the Holy Spirit. And but the Bible says when the Holy Spirit came, they received power. Say power. Religion will be knocked out of your head. The day you receive the Holy Spirit, 
Religion will be knocked out of your head because you will taste of the Lord and you will find that it is good. Hallelujah. You will come to know all the while you grew up in church. You have been taught in church. You have been preached, but you have never been preached the truth because John 8.32 says, if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Glory to God. I pray you have an encounter this morning. I pray the Holy Spirit shake you up this morning. I pray that God gives you revelation this morning to know how powerful you are. When you wake up, you give the devil a headache. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, fill me up. Come on, somebody on this side, say, fill me up. In the mighty name of Jesus. The dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, verse 5, the Bible says, And they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled and saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? You know, one of the things, I was talking to a Muslim. Hallelujah. He's turned into a pastor. And I was having a discussion with him. And I told him, do you know your Quran says that Jesus died and rose from the dead? Why don't you teach that in your mosque hallelujah why don't you teach that they don't teach it hallelujah just like so many churches if you go and read your bible by yourself you will read acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 8 uh, talks about the coming of the holy spirit uh, acts chapter 1 verse 8 talks about the holy spirit uh, coming and giving you power and corinthians talks about the gifts of the holy spirit uh, of laying on of hands prophesy but the churches will leave that out uh, because they don't want you to know the truth hallelujah as long as the church is lukewarm the devil is happy but once you are filled with the holy spirit the devil is thrown out of the church hallelujah and i'm here to tell you may your ears open up may your eyes open up may you come to know the truth and the truth shall set you free in the mighty name of jesus There's no church without the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. The day of Pentecost, the church was born. It is the birthday of the church. Jesus said to the people, go and wait on the upper room until you are endured with power. There's no Christian, there's no Christian can operate in the fullness of God unless they are endured with power. Come on, somebody say, Lord, endure me with power. Fill me up with power. Let me be effective. Let me be powerful. Let me be a nation changer. Let me bash the devil out of my life, out of my health, out of my career, out of my business. Because I'm a walking, talking, powerful channel of God. The dynamic power of Pentecost. Hallelujah. What is Pentecost? The word Pentecost comes from the Greek word Pentecostos, which means 50. Because Pentecost is held 50 days after Passover or Easter. Jews of many nations would gather in Jerusalem to celebrate this important festival. It was one day, hallelujah, amen. It was on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after his resurrection. And 10 days after Jesus has ascended to heaven, that the Holy Spirit was poured out amen on all the followers that waited upon God they were in unity they were all together one focus one mind one goal one vision one mission and that was to wait on the power to become effective Christians 
Hallelujah. Nobody can be effective in this world without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God himself. So, I spoke about last week, last before week, the atmosphere. Acts chapter 2 verse 1, and I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to do a, just a line, line by line, hallelujah, and get into today's message. Acts chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Just like the church. Every person that is here, if you have come with a full heart desire for God to touch you, you are going to be touched, hallelujah, and your life will never be the same. You will go out receiving and transformed in Jesus' name. Your business will prosper. Your career will prosper. Your life will change. Your sickness will be healed. Because last time I read my Bible, God is still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's still the supernatural God. He's still the healing God. He's still the miracle God. He's still the God that opens doors. He has never changed. Man has changed. But God has never changed. So the atmosphere, everybody was in one accord. Everybody was in one mind before the Holy Ghost came. Number two, the supernatural wind. Acts chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house they were sitting. I challenge anybody that doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit, to go home and open your Bible and read it for yourself. It's there in the Bible. I said it's in the Bible. So preach it and teach it. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, Acts chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They heard a sound. I pray tonight you hear a sound. This morning you hear a sound. Not a sound of your accounts. Not a sound of your problem. Not a sound of your sickness. Not a sound of your doctor's report. Not a sound of your family disintegrating. Not a sound of your marriage breaking up. But I'm talking about a heavenly sound. A sound of power. A sound of love. A sound of grace, a sound of mercy, a sound of restoration, a sound of abundance, a sound of increase, a sound of overflow, a sound of good news, a sound of open door. May the sound of heaven be heard from this day onwards. So they heard a sound, hallelujah, from heaven of a rushing mighty wind. We see this illustrated in Ezekiel's vision of dry bones. I went into it in uh, two weeks ago, uh, quite in-depth. Uh, the presence of God, represented by the wind, uh, breathed life into dry bones. Uh, and on that day of Pentecost, the wind, uh, representing the presence of God came and filled the people and not only filled the people but opened the church officially the Holy Spirit came and said today I cut the ribbon and I officially open the church the church of power the church that will dominate this world the church that is above and not below. The church that is not defeated. The church that is more than a conqueror. The church that is overcomer. The church that will carry my presence and my power. The church which is the light of the world. The church that is the answer to this dying world. I officially open the church. And that's the church that is sitting near you. You are carrying that power. Say, I am the church that has come into a building, but I am the church. 
the powerful wonder working miracle working tongue talking supernatural anointed devil busting church come on somebody you and i are the church the fire carriers the glory carriers hallelujah the anointing carriers of god say i'm not defeated i might be going through some stuff i might feel weak i might feel frail but i am not defeated i'm carrying god inside of me and because i'm carrying god inside of me what's the space my future is much more better i'm coming out come on somebody i'm coming out greater i'm coming out bigger i'm coming out wider i'm coming out stronger i'm coming out more blessed my days are coming my seek my season is changing in the mighty name of Jesus bless you sister god is good god is good god is good all the time god is good come on just say to your neighbor bless you sister bless you bless you bless you all the people just turn to your neighbor and say god is good god is good god is good all the time and the goodness of god is flowing over me what the enemy has planned over your life shall not come to pass bless you bless you bless you my brother i pronounce and i declare what the enemy has pronounced is cancelled by the pronunciation of jesus where jesus says i have plans for you to prosper and not to harm you in the name of jesus come on somebody shout a loud amen say a amen that will thunder let it go into the hemisphere let it go into the atmosphere let everybody come to know every enemy backing against your progress that you say a loud amen that will thunder all over the frequency of heaven and everybody will know that yes jesus is the final 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 pronouncer of my future bless you bless you bless you in jesus name so do you remember what god told ezekiel to do in order to bring those dry bones to life bless you my daughter hallelujah he said son of man preach to these bones hallelujah he said preach ye mo priak Hallelujah. Preach, 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 preach. Are you preaching? Or do you only come to hear me preaching? You must preach. Tell your neighbor you must preach to this dry bones. No matter what the dry bones is, you must preach. You must preach. You must preach until life comes. prophesy to these bones that they may live i prophesy to your marriage i prophesy to your health i prophesy to your job i prophesy to your husband i prophesy to your wife i prophesy to your children i prophesy into your future that life must come to dead situation God's word is above it's a and a man finito clear it's already declared and no power is greater than the word of God So Ezekiel preached You know what was the subject that Ezekiel preached He preached on the title unity That was the title of Ezekiel when god said to him preach prophesy he preached on the title using the word of god on unity hallelujah say lord give me a spirit of unity give me a spirit of unity what the ever the devil is putting in your mind can i say that again whatever the devil is putting in your mind it's poison it is not god's plan for your life i sprinkle in it by the blood of jesus i said i sprinkle in it by the blood of jesus 
let it be a what do you call it a washing Titus 3 verse 5 says by the washing of the word hallelujah may every seed of the enemy that is germinating in your life that is causing you to take actions that is contrary to the will plan and purpose of God be right now neutralized and cancelled by the blood of Jesus may the plan of God come to pass upon your life may every con the power of the devil be cancelled in Jesus name so Ezekiel said let me preach on unity because he knows that where there's division the spirit of the devil is there hallelujah D D D everything with D devil dangerous dead everything division he said, let me preach on unity. The leg bone is there. The shoulder bone is there. The feet is there. The thigh is there. The hip bone is there. Everything is dislocated. Disorder, chaos. Everything is looking so bad. My marriage is about to be disintegrated and divided. And God said to you, Ezekiel, preach life to the situation. And Ezekiel said, let me preach on unity. Let the neck bone come together let the hand bone come together let the leg come together let the hip come together let the chest come together and let there be restoration because where there's unity there is God where there is love there's the presence of God am I talking to somebody online in the mighty name of Jesus the day of Pentecost, the dynamic power of Pentecost means that you have the power to speak life to dead situation. Are you with me? So start speaking life. Start speaking life from today. Don't entertain the words and the vocabulary of the enemy into your life. dynamic power so so the bones were dislocated and separated when God's people come together in unity one spirit God will pour out his spirit even in your home even in your home Ezekiel preached and prophesied the word the power of God swept across those bones and they stood like a mighty army he preached on the power of coming together and those bones were all united and joined together like a mighty moving force of God. That's what happens in your home. When you speak the word, every one of you that is seated here is going to have thoughts coming into your mind. Every one of you, hallelujah, is going to go to a winter phase in your life. In your home, in your personal life, with your family. What God has put together, let no man put asunder. Not marathon, running, your pals that are with you. Because when you're getting old, they're not going to be with you. You're going to be a lonely person. You're young now and you got all the vitality. You are chasing away the very person that God put in your life because of social life. Because of social life, temporary happiness and pleasure. When God is watching you and saying, the pleasure you think is pleasure is dry bones. I want you today to preach on unity in your own home, in your own marriage, in your own life. Come on, somebody, say amen. amen. Before it's too late. The devil knows exactly how to take you away from where God is taking you. 
And I cancel those plans in the name of Jesus. I cancel the diabolical plan in the name of Jesus. May the, come on somebody, may the plan of God come to pass in your life. You will have true joy. You will have true peace. True happiness. You might say, but Apostle, what are you preaching? I don't like your preaching, what you're preaching. I'm not preaching my preaching. I'm preaching the Holy Spirit preaching. Because the Holy Spirit loves you. And because he loves you, he wants you to hear the truth. God is a fixer. I said he's a fixer. He can fix everything in the mighty name of Jesus. And I prophesy over you while under the anointing of God. And take this word from me, my brother, my sister, my daughter. The phase that you are going is not the will of God. It's not the will of God. Let me repeat it again. It's not the will of God. I speak life to the dry bones. I speak life to the dry bones. I speak life to the dry bones. In the name of Jesus. Don't take that step. In the name of Jesus. Karabashandarabashiyondo. In the name of Jesus. Don't let the enemy have victory over you. You've been through too much. You've been through too much. God is restoring. I said God is restoring. In the name of... I said God is restoring. You are under an anointed service. You are under the anointing of God. In the name of Jesus. You know, God amazes me. You know, my wife will know I can be sleeping. I can be sitting. Something that is happening so far away, God comes and just shows me. And I get so amazed when I speak to those people. I watch at them. Hallelujah. And I warn them to stop it before it happens. And if they go ahead with it, it's not my indaba. God is a loving God. He said he will not do anything unless he reveals it to his prophets. Tell your neighbor, take action. God will help you. You're not alone. Can I say that over you? You're not alone. God is going to help you. God is going to take you through this process. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to restore you. He's going to give you what you need to revive your life again. In Jesus' name. So God cannot dwell in a place where there is no unity. You can pray, pray, and pray. If you leave this place and God is speaking to you and you go home and still fight like cats and dogs, you're not taking God seriously. You are not serious with God. This is the place where you need to give your heart to Jesus and ask Jesus, God, I'm a stubborn person. You might have to take a, you know the Bible says the word of God is like a hammer that breaks forth the rock. Some of you are asking God to come and hit me. Give me your best shot with the hammer. But you're saying, God, but don't hit me with a four-point hammer. Hit me with a plastic, plastic hammer. Give me your best shot. Bah! With a plastic hammer, it doesn't even go through. But today, say, God, change that plastic hammer to an eight-pound hammer. So when it hits me, it goes inside. Binnekant. And it opens up. When it opens up that hardness, that stubbornness, that pride, that unforgiveness, that type of mentality will go out and the love of God will come inside of you and suddenly you realize what you were missing. Those that are married, do you remember those days when you were going out? 
I don't want to hold another woman now. My lovey, I'll swim the deepest sea, I'll climb the highest mountain for your love. Now you find every excuses to run away. <laughs> May I pray restoration come. You can't be looking at your wife and husband and expect them now they're 50 years to still be that young boy. Oh, no, no. This guy got to be a belly now. Well, this lady got too much of stretch marks. <laughs> If you allow God to work in your life, you will see the young girl in that stretch mark that you fell in love with. And the lady will see that young man, you know, the six pack, under that belly, beer belly. I'm not praying, saying anybody might drink beer here. It's there, it's hidden. Your eyes are blinded. I pray your eyes open up so you don't have blinkers and look that side and this side anymore. They say the grass is not green on the other side. When you look from your egg, look at that grass, so good. But when you finally end up in that grass and you start cleaning the grass, you'll find worms in there. But from far, it was looking nice, but far from nice. I proud. You worried. I pray today, Holy Spirit is doing an operation in your life, bringing you back to the cross, bringing you back to the first love. There is temptation. We're living in a real world. We have fire. We have the flesh that is contrary against God. But I pray the Holy Spirit give you the power to overcome the desires of your flesh. To overcome temptation. Hallelujah. You can only do it when you're endured with power. Say, Lord, fill me up. Come and say again, fill me up in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Ezekiel preached on unity. Unity. Unity is love. Unity is understanding. Unity is commonness. Unity is saying, Amos 3.3 3 says, how can we walk together unless we are united and in agreement? Otherwise, tug of war in your home. Everything, there will be an argument. Oh, I want, I want a brown sofa. No, 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 I want a white sofa. I want to paint this wall pink. No, 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 I want it black. I want to buy this to my children. No, no, I think you might buy that. Division. I pray you be one mind in your home. And only the Holy Spirit can do it. Only the Holy Spirit can do it. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, sometimes some of you get money. You get money, you think you're a king. The Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. If money controls you, Jesus steps back. Oh, a month and now I got 5,000 in my pocket. Ah, it's just hamba. I don't want to know you for two weeks until the money is finished and I come back to you. It shows who's the captain of your soul. Marriage is breaking up because of money. That is why the Bible says money is the root of all evil. I pray today that money will be your slave from today. Will not be your God. If God is your source, money is your slave. Money must run after you. You are called to make money. 
The Bible says in Deuteronomy 8 verse 18, God will give you the power, the ability, the capability, the capacity to make money. It's not your God. It's not your God. I pray that you go home today and realize your mistakes because you think money will last. Money will not last. Hallelujah. But if God is your source, money will constantly be flowing to you. Constantly be flowing to you in the mighty name. Of. Why am I preaching this? But I'm preaching on the day of Pentecost. You cannot do these things in your home without the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm preaching reality and practical stuffs that will make you stronger. That's what I'm going to do this year in the name of Jesus. Because these are the small rats that get into your home and you don't know. But late in the night you hear kruk, 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 kruk. He's eating things up. And when it goes into your sugar, what happens? It might eat a little bit of sugar, but you have to throw everything away. It might eat a little bit of your wardrobe, but slowly after it will start disintegrating. That's how it eats your life. You don't know it, it eats your life. And I pray this morning the Holy Spirit will help you. That all the rat, the Holy Spirit will become the rat axe. The rat axe from today in your life. Even a rat trap, you just come slowly, slowly. <laughs> Salam, do it, Mark. So all those cockroaches in your life, do it, Mark. We're not going to allow it to creep in your life and destroy what God has for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are trying hard and hard to make money, make money, but the money is coming and, and it's going way elsewhere. But you think about yourself, five years ago you were earning 10,000 and still managing your house. Now 15,000 you still can't manage. Some of you, let me hit reality and knock it with the hardest hammer of God. You don't need an increase, you need wisdom. You just get an increase now of 2,000 rand at 2,000 rand end of the month. Already you've got a budget for it. Where is it going? And end of the month you were getting 10,000. You had money. Now you're getting 12,000. Still you got no money. Lutu. You don't need money. You need wisdom. You know, I'm a person... I'm not short of money. I'm a giver. All my life I'm a giver. The day I stop giving, I'll get very, very scared because I'll stop receiving. Given it shall be given. Yes, I promised somebody the eighth car is still in progress. I will fulfill my promise to uh, donate the eighth car. already promised to my elder and I will give him. My prayer always, my secret is God, don't allow money to change me. And don't allow money to make me go over my budget. I will never buy anything to impress nobody. For how long I want a Bentley? I'm a businessman. I'm a business guru. I, I do transformation, restructuring of companies, re-engineering, training managers, CEOs, implementing policies, procedures, whatever you name it. Okay, ministry is very tough now, so I don't have so much time. When I was running my business, my son should come with me. I was taxing people 7,000 an hour. That's my rate. And you get it for nothing. I always say to God, and listen to me carefully, Lord, don't let money ever come in between me and him. 
And that is why I made so much of choices in life. When money was coming to me, businesses was coming to me to say, Lord, I'm not going to accept it because it will put me out of the will of God. Even to an extent where I was given a restaurant which my brother built for 500000 in the early 2000 with the staff, everything. I said, no, God. Because it had a bar and all the waitresses were dressing till here. I said, Lord, Joseph ran, so I'm running. Not that I'm not strong. We need to use wisdom. Not only that, the money was coming. And I said, no. But God blessed me more than that. I always wanted a Bentley. I wanted to buy it last two months ago, uh, two years ago. I restore cars. I restore classic cars. I've got five classics at the moment standing in my yard. I can sell that. I can sell my ML that God gave me next to nothing, half price, and buy it. But are the people prepared to see it? Are the people prepared to accept it because of Yaluas? And God says, the timing is not right. Our God wants to give you the best. He wants to spoil you with the best. You have a daddy that wants to spoil you with the best, but in the right season. May that season come upon your life in the name of Jesus. It's coming. Tell your neighbor it's coming. It's in progress, but it's coming in the name of Jesus. But don't let money be your God. Don't allow money to be your God. Go home today and say, Lord, I am getting 10,000 rand a month. I'm getting 5,000 rand a month. And I'm giving 20,000 rand a month. The greatest test of money, the greatest test of money is, will you allow God to be the CEO of your money. It's not about God wants your tithes. What God wants to see when you tithe is that you are putting Him first above everything. Where you are trusting Him to be the source of your provision. The source of your provision. And if you can trust him to be the source of your provision, he will become the source of your resource. Whatever you need, you'll buy it at half price. And I'm a living proof, as my wife is there, I buy things half price. My cars, my house, whatever. There's like a favor that hits you that you are at the right place at the right time and you get the deal. In the mighty name of Jesus. I wanted a big TV. I looked at this TV. It's a 75-inch TV. I like things big. I serve a big God. So when I looked at this TV, myself, my wife, my son, daughter, and I don't think my daughter was with me. My son went and we seen it. It was advertised for 20-something, 20 25,000 or whatever, 26,000. And I looked at it and I said to my wife, hey, I want this one. Because I don't buy things in a hurry. My wife will tell you, things she wants something, she has to wait. Until 
I know it's the right time at the right price I buy it. But I will never ever neglect my home. I looked at this TV and I said, hey God, I want this TV. But I'm not going to buy it at this price. I think, I don't know how many months went by. Four months. Five months. As my son is saying, five months. I went and there was a birthday sale. That TV went for 13000 Over 10,000 knocked out. And same place right there. Come, come, come. I took my wife. We did the deal. I got a bucket there, 250 rand. Deliver. Kaya. God will always make sure that you will never live above your means. Let me repeat that again. You will never live above your means. You don't have to borrow from Peter to pay Paul. You will not have more month than money. How many of you got more month than money? 15th, you got 15 days more in the month. Money palila. May that never happen. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost, let's stand in the presence of God. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost be upon you, that that will not happen again. Amen. That you will be anointed. Your money will be anointed in the name of Jesus. Do you want me to continue with this message next week? Amen. Amen. Because I haven't even touched the surface. I haven't even touched the foundation. I want you to lift up your hands. I want to do something today. Everybody that is married, come in the front. Come with your wife. Come with your husband. And your children. If you, if you are, okay, your children in Sunday school, it's fine. If you haven't, your wife is not here, your husband is not here, you're going you're gonna to take the name. Do you all want me to have a marriage couple seminar? Okay, we'll schedule one. Or maybe we'll have a marriage couple dinner night. Candlelight. Spark the sparks. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> Some people's sparks are so dead, you'll need a turbo charge. <laughs> Amen. I, the others will just have to excuse me because I need to do what God has told me to do. I need to anoint the couples. In the name of the devil is really targeting marriages. And none of this marriage will ever disintegrate in the name of Jesus. And those that are coming here and your husbands are somewhere else, your wives are somewhere else, I pray that the Holy Spirit is speaking to them right now, that you'll serve God together in this house. Another thing that I found out, which is not of God, I groom you up as a daughter of the house and I groom you up as a son of the house. Speak life into you. As soon as you find a partner and get married, you jump to the other church. It's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. If it was the will of God, God should have spoken to me. He will not wake me up late at night and speak to me. Because this is where you are fed. This is where you are taken care of. This is where your children, children will grow. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, daughters in 
Christ of this house. May your husband come in this house. Good quality, godly husband. You all found in this house. Yeah, look at them. Now the Dale found somebody that I prophesied. My daughter Samantha, before you can get married, already prophesied the hair that she had before, not when she was when she met. He also got confused. Hey. But Apostle prophesied my my wife will have a hair like this. Then she told no, my that was my usual hair before I met you. God knows you more better than yourself. And they are together. Who else met their husband and wife here in the house here? There's it, there's it, there's it. Serve God together. Serve God together. I will know when God wants to send you somewhere else. You say now, a pastor is running a church somewhere and finds you as a good wife and he's running a church. He's got responsibilities. I will gladly res release you into that person's hand. Gladly. But if I feel doubt in me and you didn't get a proper release from me and just abandon and move, it's not what God wants. Not what God wants. God is a God of protocol. So I want you to ask God. He's here. The Holy Spirit is here. Not ask God. I want you to say to God, God, restore my marriage. Restore my marriage. I just don't want to have a companion. Some of you have a companion of convenience. Do my work, wash my dishes, cook my food, iron my clothes. Hey, you must go work, pay the account, put food in there, take the trash out. That's the only time you communicate. I pray today that the Holy Spirit really touches you. Next week, I'm going to pray for all those that are single, that you become double. Okay, I know there's a lot of, so you pray. I'm just going to anoint you. My hand's got oil. That whatever you are praying, God is going to restore it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to lay my hands and... I'm going to agree with you, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let it be so, God. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. Okay, when I go the first route, then you can go back in your seat, then I can touch the, in the name of Jesus, God. Let it be so. Let it be so, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. 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 In the name of Jesus, Father. Let it be so, let it be so, let it be so fun. In the name of Jesus, I agree, let it be so, let it be so fun. In the name of Jesus, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so fun. Let it be so, let it be so, let it be so. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 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 let it be so, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Okay, all the people that I touched already. Amen. Let it be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so in Jesus' name. So, let it be so. Let it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God. Let it be so. Let it be so. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For so in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name, in Jesus' Jesus' name, let it be so. 
Huh? Oh, you know, no. Oh, okay, prophesy. <laughs> It'll be so. Kevin, did I. Where were you? Huh? You're standing there. I'm here. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Let be so in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Let's stand. Just keep on inviting people. Keep on inviting people. And listen to what was ministered today. And take action. Today's word must be applied today. Remember that today's word must be applied today. I'm a minister of the gospel. Every day I need to make decision to apply the word. Because if I don't apply, the devil will knock me out. So every day I have to decide to apply the word. And that's what keeps me going. And the word is the food for your soul. It will keep you going. Let's lift up our hands. Heavenly Father, I thank you God for every person that is here. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, I cover them under your precious blood, from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. Every person online, I pray for their marriages also, pray for the families also. I pray, oh God, keep them in the hollow of your hand. Keep them away from all harm, danger, evil, temptation, sickness, disease, heartache, pain, sorrows, from every walks of the enemy. Let them have a prosperous week. Let them come with a testimony, Father. Let them receive good news. Let peace go into the homes. And every spirit of division be swept away from the homes. Let there be love and unity. Let there be blessing and overflowing in the homes from this day onwards. In Jesus' name. May the love of God, the peace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us till we meet again in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen. We invite you to become a partner in our global ministry, which is touching lives and transforming situations all over the world. When you become a partner, you are investing in fertile soil and the Lord will richly reward you with heaven's best. Church banking details are on the screen. And if you'd like to sow a seed of honor, directly deposit it into Dr. Ryan's personal account. For e-wallets, apps like Cash Send, Standard Bank Instant Money, or any other instant cash services, kindly use our church WhatsApp number to send the voucher number as well as collection pin. Because when you sow in good soil, indirectly your money is going to places where you cannot go. When you partner with the Kingdom Vision, God will make sure that your needs are provided for. So sow your seed today.